I'm coming in hot. Greetings, esteemed colleagues in the field of engineering. It is a pleasure to have your attendance here today as we come to the conclusion of the CENCH project organized and facilitated by NK Study. Today, we'll be talking about checking for plagiarism, reducing plagiarism, naming and saving your report. Today is day seven of CENCH in seven days, powered by NK Study. And I will be your tutor for today. My name is Sir Godson. So let's quickly dive into the presentation. But before that, let's look at the summary of the tutorial session or the outline of the tutorial. So today, the first thing we'll be talking about is checking for plagiarism. So the first thing we'll be considering there is using any team and then provision of class ID and enrollment keys. We'll be providing you with class IDs and enrollment keys, and then checking and analyzing the level of plagiarism. The second one we'll be talking about will be paraphrasing and then text citation, as well as referencing under reducing plagiarism. And then the third one will be make saving and submitting your report. So please take note of this. Um, the presentation would have reducing plagiarism to be very involving. That is 55% of our time. So please. Make sure you are available during that moment. And then checking for plagiarism will take about 36% of our time. And then for naming, that side is not anything that difficult. So then we could easily work things out and then we'll move, up. We'll move on from there. So when we talk about plagiarism, plagiarism is just the act of using someone else's work or ideas without proper attribution or citation. So what we are trying to say here is that when you copy someone's work without giving the, the person proper credit or acknowledgement, then you are you are doing something which is not accepted in any academic institution, which is plagiarism. So in any academic setting, it's it is it is a serious offense as it undermines the integrity of the research and the value of the original thoughts. So when you engage in plagiarism, you are taking credit for someone else's work and passing it off as yours, which is a violation of academic honesty and integrity. So basically when we talk about plagiarism, plagiarism can range from copying and pasting entire passages or paragraphs without proper citation. And then it could also range to paraphrasing someone else's ideas without giving proper credit. So you see, some people actually think when you research and then you paraphrase an information from the internet, it's not um, plagiarism. It is. Because the main thing we are talking about here is the idea. You get it. So when you paraphrase, even if you paraphrase, you have to give credit to that source. Yes, it's very, very important. And then um, what I will also say is that the plagiarism checker we'll be using here is turn it in. So we'll be evaluating our plagiarized content with turn it in. So before that, the website is called tenitin.com. We would practice that very soon. But then um, we'll be using class ID and enrollment key for this paper. So the first one, the class ID and then the enrollment key. And then the second one, you could also use this one depending on whether the class is full, right? Now, what happens is that when it in has classes for maybe another school or university has a tenant in class. So you can't use that one because when you submit your report, it will be recorded on that school's database. Someone can steal your information and then use that. Do you get it? So what we are going to use is no repository account. For the no repository account, your report wouldn't be stored on the database of Tenet in. Do you get it? So your information is very safe, right? Good. Yes. So you could pause the video and then you write it down because you'll be using this. Very, very important, right? Amazing. So that is what we are supposed to know, right? So this one, the enrollment key is long 003. So let's create an account for Tenet in and then let's proceed from there.
So the name of the website is called anything.com. So anything.com, let's wait for it to load. Right, good. So when it comes, you would have to create an account, right? You would have to create an account for it. It's very, very important. So we'll be using the class ID and the enrollment key that I shared to create this account. So you'd have to click on create account. You would have to create an account, right? Good. So that is it. And then let me tell you one interesting thing about the plagiarism checkers. If you use the free ones, it wouldn't give you all the sources. Some of them, you see, there are some websites that take information from other websites. So you would think you took this information from this source only. It can also be recorded on another website. So what you would have to do is that you would have to use the Then it in will give you all the websites because it is it is very, very good. It is very, very good. And then Grammarly plagiarism checker only checks for plagiarized content without giving you the percentage and then without also giving you the sources. That is the free one. That is why we are using Tenet in for this purpose. So we would have to create a user profile. We are students, so we would have to select the students and then you wait for it to load. So here you see you'd have to provide um, an information for that, right? Very, very good. Now, um, for some of the class IDs I provided, we have 371257. And then five two. So I have the enrollment key is long zero zero four. You know, the enrollment key is. We change this one to that. Let's use three seven one two two three six six. Right. I didn't provide this one in the presentation, but then I want you to use this one as well. Long zero zero four. Then first name. You could use any name for it. Uh, right. And then the email address. Right. So suggest the password and then enter a new name, like, what's the name? Please select a secret question. You could, what song did you dance? Amanda, let's just take Amanda, All right? Yes, and then we check if we are not robots, right? When they are done, we agree, and then we would create a profile. We we'll agree and then create a profile. So you see your account has been created. Right, your account has been created successfully. So if if you want to if you want to check for plagiarism, this is what you do. Now, you see this one is no repository. So you see the instructor is anonymous, right? Yes. So this one, your information cannot be taken. It wouldn't be stored on Tenet Inc's database, right? Good. So you would have to click on the class name. You get it. You'd have to click on the class name. Now, after you click on the class name, you now click on submit. You get it because you have to submit a uh, one. Now, you would have to change the submit from cut and paste upload to single file upload because we just want to upload our files, right? Good. So when you're done, you give a submission title, any submission title. Okay. Web two, and you choose a file from your computer, right? You choose a file from your computer. So let me say we want to, okay. Let me select any document, any document. any document. So let's use this one, right? Good. So when you're done, you would have to upload it. Now, when you upload it, it's it's actually loading so we would have to wait for some time yes now after you upload the file you would have to confirm it right good you would have to confirm it amazing now when you confirm it you now click on return to assignment list 
you now click on return to assignment list. So what happens is that the plagiarism checker will process it. The percentage will come here under the similarity. You get it. So it is processing. It is processing. Let's wait for some time for it to finish processing and let's continue from there. All right. So you could see this person's plagiarism is 79%. Wow, amazing. Now, when is more than 30% your report could be rejected? 79%. Wow. Okay, so what happens is that you click on a view, on the view, and then a new a new page will open, right? A new page will open. So this is the page. This is the new page, right? Amazing. So what happens is that you want to know where the information like you want to know the plagiarized content. So what you would have to do is that, you see for the ones in the red, you would have to ignore that one because a report on poor sanitation, you see, this is a report which has been submitted to KNST's portal before. So this checker would record it as a plagiarized content because someone has submitted it before. You get it, it's good. So what we would do is that because of um, this, we would have to ignore, you see, means that the person has submitted all the site, right? Amazing. Do you get it? Good. So you have to click on the percentage, the number. So now when you click on it, it will give you all the, it will give you all the information. Do you get it? So here, you see, this one is submitted to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So you see, this is a report I took from a senior course mate. Do you get it? Because he has submitted it before, it will be, Recorded on KNUST's portal. Do you get it? So you see, I'm now checking it again. So if you check it again, it will be like this is actually on the Tenet Int database. So it will be recorded as what plagiarism. Do you get it? Good. So all this site, all the ones in red means it has been submitted to KNST. And then we have the second one, the one in this color is an internet source. So you see, it's actually, you see, it's the same thing here. Do you get it? So you have to give them credit. It's very, very important. So you'll be clicking on it to check where your plagiarized contents could be found, right? Amazing. And then when you are done, what you could do is that you could download the document because some people want to paraphrase. Do you get it? So as to reduce their level of plagiarism. So you could download it and then you select current view. Now, when you select current view, to prepare to download. Now, when it downloads, you can now compare the plagiarized content to your original content, and then you would do the paraphrasing in order to reduce the percentage of the plagiarism, right? Good. So that is how we go about it. Yes, that is how we go about it. So we are done creating the Tenetine account. Very, very important. Now, the next thing we would have to do is that we would have to look at in-text citation. So please, after the... PDFs download, you could scroll to the bottom. When you scroll to the bottom, it will give you the summary of the matched overview, the sources of where you take the information. So you could see that with this one, the person actually did the report very well because at that time, the person hadn't submit, submitted the report. This 77% this wouldn't have been there. Do you get it? It would only be this, this, and this, so 3%. So this, this guy did very well. It's, uh, level of plagiarism would only be three percent. Wow, amazing! This is this is very very uh, impressive, right? Very very impressive. So now, when you download the file, this is what happens. So this is what appears here. Amazing. So all the parts which has been submitted to KNST's portal will be the one the red. You get it, and then so. The red is submitted to Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology. Two is future. So you get what? The detailed sources. You get it. Amazing. So that is how we check for plagiarism. Amazing. So let's move on to our next task. So for the second side, we'll be talking about reducing plagiarism. And the first one will be in-text citation so when we talk about in-text citation what does it mean now the explanation in-text citation is a method of acknowledging the sources of information 
or ideas used in a piece of writing. It involves including a reference to the source within the text of the document, usually in the form of a parenthetical citation or footnotes. So the purpose of in-text citation is to provide the readers with information to locate the source in the bibliography or works cited list. So the name in text, the name in text citation comes from the fact that the citation is included within the body of the text rather than at the end of the document. At the end of the document, we'll be providing references. And that references, according to the algorithm, the algorithm would, of the Microsoft Word would generate the references based on the in-text citations you made, right? Don't worry about that. We would be doing some practicals on it so you would understand it. It's good. Yes, so very simple. This will allow the readers to see the source material and understand how it relates to the argument or analysis you are presenting. Right, good. So finally, the benefit of the inset in-text citation is that it allows the writers like you to clearly and accurately acknowledge their sources. Do you get it? Giving credit where credit is due and avoiding plagiarism. Do you get it? Amazing. So that is what I will say about, about in-text citation. In-text citation is an important part of academic writing because it demonstrates intellectual honesty and helps to build a foundation of knowledge and understanding in any field. So let's look at how we would insert in-text citation in our document. All right, so assuming I take this information from the internet, do you get it, about my community, what happens is that, let me go to media. What happens is that I want to um, take an information from this site. So what I'll do is that, what I'll do is that when I copy this information, when I copy this information, I would have to give credit to them. Because even Wikipedia, you see this one, this two, this three, they are all references. Like it's, it's a form of citation. Do you get it? We'll look at it very soon. So you see, when you click on, when you just select it, it highlights the two. Do you get it? Just observe it. Because they also made references. Do you get it? This is intellectual honesty, right? Amazing. So assuming I copy this information and then I post it in my document, post it in my document here, right? So let me see. Amazing. So um, don't worry about the ones here. Don't worry about that one. The the texts with the red wavy line under it. Don't worry about those ones. Now, what I what I want to do is that I want to insert citations. Right. I want to insert a citation. So what I will do is that what I will do is that I'll move the mouse the mouse cursor to the position where I want to insert the citation. So you see, it's called in-text right? in citation. So we would have to provide the citation at the point where, uh, where, you, where you took the information. Please note that even if you have the information like this, and then you paraphrase, you still have to give them credits. You get it? It's very, very important. So you would have to go to the references tab initially to be at home. So you go to the references tab. You move on to the references tab. Right, good. So when you move on to the references tab, you can now click on insert citation, right? Now you would have to click on what? Add new source. Now, when you click on add new source, a dialog box appears. You would have to give the necessary information. Now, the type of source, you could change this. You see, we took the information from the we took the information from the internet, right? From a website. So we'd have to select website. If yours is from a report or a book section, then you have to select that one, right? Good. So because it's a website, we don't know the author, right? Good. But then we have to know the name of the web page and the name of the website, right? Good. So this is this this name of web page and website, they are two different things altogether. Some people actually think that the first 
name on the website is actually the name of the webpage. No, no. There is a way of knowing that. So let, let me quickly teach you how to do that. So let's go to the place where we took the information. Right, good. Right, click on any empty area on the place where you took the information. That is the source. And then you go to view page source. View page source. Do you get it? View page source. Now, you see a lot of codes appear here, right? Good. Don't worry, you're engineers. You can kill this with simple analysis, right? Don't worry about that. Now, if you want to know the name of the web page, if you want to know the name of the web page, what you have to do is that, you see, whenever you see um, a list of words inside these two, these two codes, title, this one, this one, and then this one. That will be the name of the web page. Do you get it? There's a, there's a difference between web page and website. Do you get it? The website you are using actually is Wikipedia, enwikipedia.org. Do you get it? And then the web page, you see, Wikipedia is actually a website which has a lot of information. The particular information we are looking for is Ablikuma. Do you get it? So we would have to know the name of the web page inside the website. Just like when you have um, a book, an, an exercise book. The exercise book has pages, right? Good. So we could consider the, the exercise book itself as the website. Do you get it? And then the pages inside will be the web page, right? Good. So here, the title of the web page is Ablikuma slash Wikipedia. Please, it's very, very important. You see, this one is slash Wikipedia. You could search for Ablikuma and then uh, another, if you just type Ablikuma, where exactly do you take the information? Because other websites also have information on that, right? So it's, here. it's very, very important. And then the name of the website is what? Wikipedia, right? Good. Now, the year, here is also, this, this, this is very, very important. This portrays intellectual honesty. Do you get it? So you have to take your time to give proper credits to the to your sources, right? Amazing. So here you'd have to know the year, the month, and the day of publication. Sometimes they would ask you um, the year assessed. The year assessed is actually requesting you to give them the, the date or the year you assess that information. So the year of publication is different from the year of Accessing the information, they get it. So here, because there is nothing like access access here, we have to give the publication. So let's go back to the, let's go back to the where we were, and then now here we want to locate the date of publication. You get it. Now you see there are a bunch of codes here. You can't easily identify it. So what we'd have to do is that use my trick. Just use issue a command on your on the keyboard. Control F. When you issue this command, when you issue this command, what happens is that you see I've selected this one. So let me kick that one out. Right. So let me clean this one. Amazing. Let's type update. D U B D A T. Now you see the codes didn't include that. Update actually means publication date. So let's just use dates. Let's just use date. So this one is the first one, but then we don't have anything like that. Let's move on to the second one. So you see here, they've written date published and then date modifies, modified. The difference between the date published and then the date modifies is that the date published is actually the, the date the information was published on the internet. And then the date modified, you know that as we, as we move on in life, Sometimes you would have to modify some information because maybe you would have to add more information or you would have to take some from it. You get it. So there can be some form of modification. But then it is the published date we are looking for, right? So what we'll do is that we would have to look at the date here. This one is 2019. And then um, 2019, this one is the month. And then this one is the day. You get it. So let's just copy this one, right? Let's copy this one. Good. And let's go back to what we were doing. So the year was what? 2019. The month was what? Ten. Now month, you see, here is um, January. Then is uh, 
then is October, I think. If I'm wrong. I, I know I'm right. And then the this one, when we checked it was what 21. So let's clear this one. So you see, we are giving proper credit. This this are accurate information. Actually, viewing this from the website source code. Do you get it? Good. And now we need the URL. Now the URL, the URL, let's look at the URL. Um, the URL could be found here, right? Good. This one. Don't use the source code one. So this will be the URL, n.wikipedia.org, wiki, ablikuma, right? Amazing. So let's copy that one as well. And then let's see it here, right? Good. So that is it. So we are done. It's very simple. So it will be inserted in your document. This is the proper way of crediting a source. Do you get it? Good. Good. So here we could also change the style. We could also change the style. You come to the style part. You could choose um this one. You could also choose any one, any one that you want. You get it. You could also choose any one, the Harvard style, or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right, good. So me, I prefer using the APA, right? Good. So you see, I have generated an in-text citation. This is how we generate in-text citation. So any part of your report that you take information from a source, you would have to give them credits. This portrays intellectual honesty, right? Amazing. So when you're done with the in-text citations, you can now do your referencing. So let's look at what referencing mean. All right, so we are reducing what's plagiarism. So the next topic is referencing, right? So we talk about referencing. Referencing is just the act of citing the sources of information or ideas that you use in your work, right? Good. And it is an important aspect of academic writing as it allows you to give credit to the original authors or sources of the material you are using and also helps establish the credibility of your work by demonstrating that you have conducted thorough research and are basing your ideas on reliable sources. Do you get that? Good. So referencing is something very simple. So in brief, referencing, what it actually means is that after you are done with your in-text citation, you would have to reference. Do you get it? Because the algorithm of the software would generate the references based on the in-text citation. Do you get it? So let's look at the tutorial. So this one is just a uh, very small information, but then we have an in-text citation here. So let's quickly generate a reference for this document. So you just go to the references tab, go to the references tab, you go to bibliography, and then you choose references, right? Good. Now, when you choose references, it will give you the your information, you get it. So you see, I believe my Wikipedia, and this is the published date, 2019, October 21st. Retrieved, did you get it? And then it, it was retrieved from what? HTTPS, en.wikipedia.org, do you get it? So this is how we do our referencing. It contains all the necessary information to give proper credit to your source, right? So with this, you are safe, and then your reports could be accepted, right? Amazing. All right, so the second the second tool we'll be talking about is paraphrasing, paraphrasing. So when we talk about paraphrasing, paraphrasing is just the act of restating someone else's ideas or information in your own words. You get it. So let's look at an example. Now, but before that, it is called paraphrasing because it involves you taking someone else's words or ideas and putting them into your own way or into a new form while still maintaining the original meaning. Do you get it? So if, if you still paraphrase, it is a form of it is a form of uh, plagiarism. Do you get it? I've already explained that one. And then the benefit of paraphrasing is that it allows you to include your information from other sources in your work. 
while still demonstrating your own understanding and interpre interpretation of the material, right? Amazing. So let's look at an example. So for example, if you wanted to include an information from, let's say, a journal article in your research paper, and then you want to paraphrase it. So let's look at um, this one. This is the original text. Then it says that the study found that participants who exercised regular who exercised regularly had had lower levels of stress and anxiety compared to those who did not. Now paraphrase. Paraphrase is like you, you are not writing it in your own words, but then you are maintaining the words, the original idea or the original meaning. You get it from the person's idea. So the paraphrase will be something like according to the study, individuals who exercised on a regular basis experienced reduced stress and anxiety compared to those who were inactive. They get it. So this is what we call paraphrasing. So paraphrasing is very important. Paraphrasing is very important. Yes. So I think we are done with, we are through with today's tutorial. So this will be the end. Thank you for your unwavering attention. We hope that you found this tutorial very, very interesting and helpful because you would have to remember that report writing is an important skill for engineers to develop because it allows all engineers to communicate their ideas and findings clearly and effectively to a variety of audience. Do you get it? So um, not only the Sench project, when you are preparing a lab report or a design project or a research paper, you would have to be sure that you follow the strategies that we discussed you get it in order to produce a well organized, clearly written, and properly referenced reports. So, good luck with your report writing. We will look forward to seeing the great work that you produce in the future. Thank you very much for your time. This is NK Study. Experience the difference. My name is Sir Godson, and I've been your tutor for this tutorial. Enjoy your day, stay blessed, and stay healthy. Have a nice day. I'm coming in. Hot.